afternoon, Facebookers. Well, actually, it depends when you're watching this. You could be watching it morning, noon, or night. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we are doing this a little bit differently because the Wi-Fi connection is really, really quite poor uh, where I am. So I am having to... Uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? I am having to look to be flexible. I'm looking to be uh, adapt what I'm doing. Who knows whether, whether this will work, but you've got to believe. You've got to believe. Because if you don't believe, you won't achieve. You've probably heard that uh, before, but I think it's so true. Let me just uh, forward this in one other place. And we can get started. We can do a, a review uh, of this incredible week. I would really encourage you to have a pen and paper uh, to hand and, and kind of go to, go to work. Um, for me, this has been an unbelievable week. And I have personally learned so much. And I'm always curious as to what you learn from, from what it is I'm sharing with you. Um, and that's why reflection is is a pivotal part of being coached. I know many of you look at me as your coach. Um, how many of you, by the way, you do look at me as your coach? Just put yes or no, you look at me. Maybe you, you've got a few coaches. There's nothing specifically wrong with that. But maybe you look to me as someone who is there for you and someone who is a coach for you. Uh, because if you do, I say this all the time, if your coach asks you to do something, he's not really asking you to do it for his benefit. He's asking you to do it for your benefit. And I fundamentally believe in you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, <coughs> excuse me, right now, I, I, I believe in you. And sometimes I think I believe in you, maybe more than you believe in yourself. And I was extremely fortunate. I believe I had one of the best, you notice how I keep saying I believe? I believe that I had one of the best coaches the world ha has ever known. I learned so much for him. 16 years of his life, he gave uh, to me. He was there for me unconditionally, seven days a week. I traveled around the world with him. I tra traveled all over America. I traveled in China with him, m so many places in Europe. And I learned so much from him. And it wasn't just what I learned from him. It's what I've learned from working with so many people and I'm sharing that with you because I believe in you. And my mission in life is to inspire you to be the person that you want to be. And this has been a, a very interesting week on emotional stamina. And one of the things, one of the biggest learnings for me is about being proud. I, I, I think that it's fundamentally really important to be proud of yourself and also for other people to be proud of you. And I encourage all of you to, to think about that. It really stems from gratitude because this week we've been looking at emotional stamina, emotional hygiene. Let's do a little recap of what we've spoken about this week because when it comes to physical hygiene, most of us know how important it is. Okay, look, don't clean your teeth now, okay? And don't wash. Don't change your underwear. Don't do any of that. The next time you get a cold, uh, just carry on working, right? The next, I uh, don't sleep actually uh, for a few days. The next time you fall over, don't get up. To next time you break your leg, just walk it off. Um, what you'll start to realize is just how much importance, how much importance we place on our physical well-being. Isn't that crazy? When you fall over, what do you do when you get up? Most people will look around and think, "Is anyone looking?" Because we're so uh, and that's toxic for our emotional hygiene, right? So we all know this. And then just think, well, how good are we at dealing with... Have you ever drunk anything that's poisonous before? And you thought, oh my... Uh, 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 and you've got to do something about it? We often know what to do if we're not well. If we're seriously unwell, we're extremely lucky in the world that there are many things that people can do. But what stops us from being the best that we can possibly be is our emotions. We are emotional beings and that's just the way it is. Our emotions are what makes our life so incredible. I've had such an amazing day yesterday. I was with two of our My365 uh, elite members, Amadi and Carmen, and just spending time with them. The emotions are one of love and respect and fun and just feeling that connection. It's like 
our ability to experience wonderful emotions. The other side of it is that we are also prey to experience emotions like worry and fear and doubt and rejection. And all I've tried to do this week is make people aware because that's when we really change, right? We change when we become aware. But sometimes we become aware and we go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'd rather be unaware because I didn't realize just how much rejection I feel. I didn't realize just how much pain I feel. I mean, rejection. What did you learn about rejection this week? And if you didn't watch every day this week, check out the broadcast. So, so, so powerful to understand that rejection, you feel pain, physical pain. Why? It's within your DNA. The worst thing on earth that you ever wanted to feel when we were living in little groups to survive was rejection. It was like a physical pain. Like, oh my God, if I get rejected, I'll be clicked out, kicked out of the tribe. I'll be on my own and I'll die. It was a warning sign. So rejection is wired up to pain receptors in our body. And how many times a day do you feel rejection? How many times do you reject yourself? I mean, this is deep stuff. This is powerful stuff. But you can change. What do you need? You need the desire to change. And you need a coach, someone like me, who will show up for you every day as you go to work on designing and creating that better version of yourself. But the question that you need to ask yourself is, do you want to be better? Do you want to be proud of yourself? Do you want other people to be proud? And do you want to tackle your biggest issues, ladies and gentlemen? We all know what it is. It's our lack of consistency. Next week, I'm having a week off and I'm, I can't wait to see how people deal with not that routine at 7 a.m. every week. My, my challenge to you is get up and follow the same routine. Do something at 7 a.m. for 15, 20 minutes about your growth. You see, one of the reasons we feel, there's many reasons, rejection, fear, guilt, we ruminate. In many cases, is there is a gap between where you are and where you want to be. And if you don't have a project, if you don't have something that you're working towards that lights your fire, that floats your boat, that is where all of those negative emotions sit. And when we feel those emotions, I don't know about you, like guilt, we want to suppress it. How do we suppress, how do we suppress it? Well, in many cases, food, alcohol. And when people come aware of this, it's like, I just want to shut the doors. I don't want to know. I don't want to know that. But... Some of you do. How many of you, you really want to grow? You want to be a better version of yourself. You want to look at yourself in the mirror and go, you're fantastic. You're great. I back you up. I back you all the way. I got your back here. You see, in order to do that, it takes work. It takes dedication because it's undoing. And most of you know this, that one of the reasons it's challenging for us to be have emotional hygiene uh, that we recognize that when we are experiencing emotion that is stopping us from being happy. Guilt especially stops us from being happy. When we feel guilt, we go over and over and over things, thinking about what we could have done, should have done, would have done. And unconsciously, it stops us from being happy. And then we looked at this failure. How does failure affect you? It distorts what you think you're capable of doing. I remember reading this study they got. Uh, a whole load of people, they gave an American football, they gave it 10 yards away uh, from the post and they had to kick the ball over the post. The ones who missed, they were all asked afterwards, how far away do you think that post were? The one who failed more than any than the rest, they thought the post was further away. Further away. <laughs> the ones who got it over a lot, they thought the post was really close. What does that mean? I mean, this is fascinating, right? It means if you want to be slimmer, fitter, healthier, financially free, if you've failed in the past, especially with weight loss, you, you think that it's just too far away. It's like, well, it's too difficult. It's too with, out of my reach. And this is another reason why you need coaching. And you need to be around a gritty community of people who all want to grow. If you want to settle for where you are, that's fine. But that's not in our DNA either. We are not designed to settle. We are designed to keep growing. But the challenge was when we were growing, we were growing to survive. And now you can survive. Most of you, you don't have to do very much. You can just sit there.
and grow. And not grow. The future is yours. The future is yours for the taking. But it's about you deciding what it is that you want to do. Now, one of the other emotions that uh, we haven't spoken about very much, which is loneliness. And there is loneliness all over the planet, like never before. People feeling isolated. And loneliness is for, about 40% of people would have experienced loneliness at some feeling isolated. And uh, chronic loneliness is, is, is deadly. It's deadly. It's like it's been shown to be worse than smoking or equal to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. God knows how, they, how uh, scientists, social scientists have ever worked that out. But to feel chronically lonely. But you have to understand it's a choice. And when we feel lonely, the danger, the danger of it is that our social skills start to atrophy and wear out. So that when we start connecting with people again... We doubt our skills. This happens a lot in relationships. So my challenge to you, people say, get out more. Talk to more people. Get uncomfortable. Your growth is not here. Your growth is outside of where you are. We have to get really good. You have to, we, we, we are victims to feel comfortable. Our challenge is to become someone who wants to get uncomfortable, who wants to go through pain, who wants to go through discomfort because that is where your potential is. And if we look back one day and go, look how far I came. You'll see, what did you have to get through? Was it all plain sailing? And as we wrap up this week, listen, think of this, the wind in life. Not that there's much wind here in, uh, in Vegas. Uh, the wind in life is like the challenges that we face. Now, you can either take the wind as a threat with the things that happen to you, or you could see it as a challenge that is there to blow you off course, but for you to bring yourself back on course. The same wind blows us all. And as Jim Rohn said, it's the setting of the sail. The same wind blows us all. If you don't set your sail, you'll just go all over the place. But if you decide, this is where I want to go, that wind that can extinguish a candle can power a fire. If you have that burning desire, when challenges come, you will eat them up like an energy bar. It's gone. Because your future is more important and you know that you need the challenge. So my challenge to all of you is, I've been doing this for I don't know how long, over two years maybe, on Periscope before Facebook actually started doing live every single day. I've not taken a day off, apart from when I've been on an aeroplane. Next week, I'm going to take five days off because I think it's really important that you all step off, step back and decide where is it that you want to go with this, with me helping you. How do you want to use me to help you? Because I'd say maybe 2% of you that show up are really utilizing what I'm sharing, but that's okay. Our elite members, maybe only 2% of you are actually really using uh, the master classes that we've put together. I mean, this stuff is great, what we do here. And many people, this has massively changed their life. But there's always another level. How great do you want to be? How much an inspiring person do you want to be to really go to work on yourself? That you can look back one day and go, look who I became. Through hard work, through dedication, through passion, through enjoying the process. I know this week has been big for a lot of people and you should be really proud of yourself because you're still here. You're watching this right now. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to do this. So someone's, uh, Kate is asking, what am I going to do at 7 a.m.? I'm still going to get up at 4 o'clock uh, every single day. I've had four hours sleep. It's not ideal, but I'm still waking up at the hours that I'm, I'm hardwired to get up at 4 o'clock. You couldn't pay me not to do it. I don't feel like exercising every day. I don't feel like, this is the thing. This is the last thing I want to say on this subject. And it's this. How quickly can you get back up when you fall, up, when you fall down? Because that is the mark of someone who has developed real emotional stamina. Uh, we are definitely going to do an elite masterclass on emotional hygiene. There's no question about it. It's such an incredible subject. And I want to empower you to be incredible. Don't wish things were better. Wish you were better. We are so excited 
about the My365 Summit that many of you are coming to. If you haven't bought your ticket to that event, I don't know why not. If you say you can't afford it, I would do whatever I can to get there. Because you, it's not just me, it's other incredible human beings and the people that we're bringing over from the United States. Dr. Rakowski, uh, one of the finest nutritionists in the world, and Patty Drobanowski, who's just incredible. I can't wait uh, to see uh, these people. And uh, for any of you that are interested in, in losing weight, uh, getting fit, and uh, really changing your relationship with your health, we have something so exciting coming out. Watch this space. Um, I reckon of all the success I've had with people from all different walks of life, the most success I've had is helping people turn their health around, making their health a priority. The results I've got with people, they're phenomenal. I mean, ridiculously phenomenal. And if you're ready to do something about that, and I mean really ready, you wait, you wait. Because I tell you, the best is yet to come. How many of you say it with me? You believe the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Great days are ahead of you. It's the science of hope. When you know that the future is going to be better than this. And even if you don't believe it, you could tell yourself that. You've got enough evidence in your life. You guys are amazing. I'm excited to, to see how you take on having a break, having, a, having a, a step back and thinking, what have I really achieved since I've been a part of this whole experience? What are the biggest learnings for me? And what do I want to do now? How do I want to use Coach Cohen? How do I want to use Coach Cohen, one of the best coaches in the world, the king of coaching? And when I say king, I'm not comparing myself to anybody else because I, I don't really, whatever anyone else does, I'm interested in what I do. And I believe I'm the best I can be and I'm getting better and I believe in you. Have a great week. I'm looking forward to seeing your reviews. If you believe that I am your coach, I promise you, if I was working with you physically and I asked you to do something, I'd say, listen, this ain't working. You're embarrassing me. Go away. Now, I don't mean you've got to necessarily make a video, but if you're not reviewing what I'm sharing with you, it's going to go. Just go over your head. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, have a great week off. I'm sure I'll show up, but not in the capacity that I have been for a while. And then we'll go again and... Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, weekend. I'm so excited. I'm spending time with some amazing people over here in Vegas. Uh, I'm with one of my mentors today, uh, one, of the, one of the people that inspires me. I've got five hours with him this morning. I'm going to make notes, make notes, and I'm going to learn, 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 learn. Thank you so much. If you haven't shared this broadcast, uh, please do. If you haven't watched our broadcasts from this week, I would encourage you to do that. And lastly, if you haven't listened, to our Member of the Month broadcast with the amazing Mark Pitcher. Uh, you want to hear an inspiring story because I'll tell you this. My365, we are a story-based organization. We are here to help you create the story that you want. We believe this. Your future is unwritten. It's unwritten. It's like a blank page. That is the future. If you don't do something and you don't recognize that you have the power to create the future that you want. If you don't realize this, today, tomorrow will be very similar to yesterday and the day before. If you're happy with that, that's great. If you're not, you need to go to work on yourself. I love you. I love my life. I love my 365. And the best is yet to come.